Where's that bully? Hey guys, welcome back. Um, so here we are. We're going to start fitting these parts. So um, a, lot, a few people said I'm mad, I'm crazy. Uh, maybe you're right, maybe you're wrong. I don't know, but I'm going to do it anyway, just for the fun of it. And I know you guys will enjoy watching. So because um, I know everybody likes to see some fabrication. So um, excuse the screaming, kid next door <laughs> screaming and playing. Um, so uh, let's go and have a look at what we've got. What we've got to do to do some prep work. So then here we've got the um, the parts we've got to weld on. This is the rear axle I'm doing first. So we've got the two little pieces for the ends here, they're going to go up in here, as I showed you in the previous video, and then we've got these pieces here which are going to go up on here. So there we go. Um, obviously this is the top, we've got the hole here for the to pick up in the vent. I'm going to be using a Gwyn Lewis wading kit which is in the post, so I'll show you all that when it comes. Uh, but first of all, to fit all these we've got to remove some bracketry, so we've got to remove these um, these pads here for the bump stops on the chassis and um, we've also got around the other side if we go around here we've got this bracket here which I believe was a clip for the brake pipe I think I can't remember now um, and then this one here this one here this is definitely a clip for the brake pipe this is where the uh, T-piece bolts on so um, remove these and everything but before we do any of that it's just down there where I fall um, the one thing to remember is to draw everything so what I've done here made a drawing and we've got the rear axle drawn out here. You can see where I've marked out where that hole is on that bracket. Got that bracket there marked out the height from the weld line and the uh, distance from the caliper mount face. And then again, the same on the front axle. We've got the breather point marked out. And then we've got some exploded diagrams to show what's what here. So there we go. And here we go. Many hours later, getting on with the uh, with the actual fitting of these things. As you can see the fit isn't very good at all, you need to do a lot of cutting and shaping and stuff to make them fit. I need to cut this around here otherwise I'll be interfering with the diff mountain face. Um, and on this one, the, the, when you fit it on, I'll show you in a minute how it fits without it, but I've made these little plates up, I'll take you around the other side. And um, you can see here, you can see the fit isn't particularly good. So what I've done is made this sort of bridging piece up to weld in here that actually pushes this back because as it starts to ride up this radius part of the axle it wants to sit up in the air so rather than cut this away I just thought I'd space it back I put some um, it's only five mil not six mil but it'll do for now it'll not not for now it'll do um, and then I, I've got that in there to fill it that gap up there you can see the angle there is completely different to the angle here so you need something to, to take up that angle because if you start welding massive gaps it'll really start pulling um, I'm putting that to that shape and on this side this would just be an open gap here so I've made up this plate you can see I've got a grommet in there and that's where the the breather tube is going to come out, out of here I go up into the um, into the rear arm sort of out and up like that um, and then into the breather which will sit down in there I say I'm going to use the Gwyn Lewis kit and if you use the Gwyn Lewis kit you can also buy a couple of um, uh, 12 mil um, right angle swivels that go in there and then and then you can fit the pipe in, into there with the 12 and you just tap the 12 mil hole standard the TD5 and the Puma axles have got a knocking brass thing that can come out so um so basically what's got a grommet in there and what I did because the the grommet you can't actually have the grommet in material this thick so I, I sort of milled the back down recessed it so the grommet sits in so there we go and I did the back um, purely because it just looks tidier because um, when it gets when I weld it it's going to get distorted so I'm going to have to grind some out but um, I was going to do it on the front and I thought we'll make a mess when I grind it so when I weld it so uh, I did it on the back but there we go you can see if I take this out of here I take this off I'll give you an idea of how it fits without it um, I've got my spirit level on here making sure that it's you can see this how this way you get a gap like that um, and then run the other side you can see there it uh, doesn't fit at all well so um, basically yeah bit of work to do again on this side I'm gonna have to cut this away to make it go down over the uh, over the diff without interfering with the weld there and there we go guys that's it all um, welded up now so you can see I've got the, I managed to keep that hole okay front and back so it's welded on the inside as well for extra strength so you can see I'll go on the other side and show you and right there we go, all welded up there. So um, yeah, looking good. 
and I'm happy with the way it fits now. It's a lot better than um, a lot better than the way it fitted uh, before. And also the kind of distance here kind of more more matches the distance here, so it won't look so odd and fussy like that. So um, yeah, we have to preheat this before we weld it. And also notice I've got a bolt in there with a couple of washers. You don't want to be getting any um, weld spatter going there. That'll ruin your day. So uh, there we go. See you for the next little bit, and um, we'll get on welding this. Hey okay, guys, so. That's that. That's all fitted now. I'm not going to start grinding it now because um, it's too late to make a load of noise. Uh, so I'm going to call that day for this video. You're probably thinking this has been very, very short. Reason for that is uh, if you know me from my Nigel's Modeling Bench channel, you know I've had lots of computer problems. Um, I, I had a my computer started really, really smelling badly, like it's burning up. Uh, I've since found out it's probably the components breaking down inside. Um, and could actually catch fire so it seems to be okay so I don't give it a lot of work to do so I bought a new computer from Argos and um, got it home and it had a faulty CPU it was very very slow ridiculously slow uh, I kept it for a couple of days and it didn't get any better um, so yeah that was uh, that was a waste of time so I bought another one from Curry's and uh, that was a Dell and I got that home and the sound card didn't work. I did all the uploads, checked all the drivers, didn't let Windows do its driver updates and everything. Still no sound. So I thought, well, I'm not going to start taking it apart. It's a brand new computer. So uh, that's going back as well now. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll, you know, go out and buy something proper. So I bought like a £900 Dell <laughs> and had it delivered to my mum's house because I'd get quicker delivery to her place than I could to me. So I um, did that. It was delivered yesterday. So I went down yesterday evening to pick it up. And when I got there, the box had been opened uh, and resealed very uh, craftily. And in the box, the computer wasn't actually sealed in a bag or anything. And there was none of that silica gel or anything. So, um, oh, and the manual was missing. So obviously somebody had sealed it back up and taken it back as, um, you know, unopened. So God knows that could have been a three-year-old computer for all I knew. So there was no way in that. So uh, fourth time lucky, perhaps. I've got another one now coming tomorrow. So unbelievable. Um, I doubt very much if I'll leave it up tomorrow. Uh, some of you Land Rover guys will be disgusted to hear I'm actually going to look at a Ford Ranger Raptor tomorrow with the thought of perhaps buying one. So um, yeah, let me know what you think of the comments down below. <laughs> but uh, I don't expect Land Rover people will speak too kindly about a Ford Ranger Raptor. But um, I've always wanted a big pickup and um, since the Raptor came out I thought well, I'd just love it and the opportunity has arisen that I can get one. So I think I might. We'll see. So um, thanks for watching this one. Sorry it's been so short. As I say, I can't do big videos because of all the uploading and everything. It makes the computer um, go mental on overdrive. So uh, I'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.